Hello. Today we want to talk about how active power output of generators can be controlled in a power system. The key to control the real power output of a generator is the so-called rotor angle theta. Here we have a simplified model of a three-phase generator. This is a single-phase model. Here we have the induced voltage in the generator. Then we have a synchronous reactance inside the generator. These are the generator coils mainly. And here we have the terminal voltage of the generator. And in between the terminal voltage and the induced voltage, we have this so-called uh, rotor angle. The rotor angle between UP and UG is the same angle as the angle between the axis of the rotor and the rotating magnetic field in the three-phase coils. Again, the rotor angle theta is a function of the mechanical torque applied to the shaft of the generator. Here we see the three generators supplying power to the grid. You can also see the rotor angle between the axis of the rotor and the rotating magnetic field of the generators. Let's focus now on the rotor angle only and stop the disturbing rotation of the machines. So here you see that in this case all the machines supply the same power to the grid and uh, the rotor angle of the same machines provided they have the same ratings or the same. And now we are increasing this rotor angle and decrease the other rotor angles because the power supply is still the same in total uh, to the end user. Therefore, let's increase now the rotor angle at this machine. You see power supply here is increasing, but then since the supply, the total supply did not change, the load is the same, the other two machines have to reduce the rotor angle. So here we increase the torque and here at these two machines we decrease the torque and then you see how the power has been increased in this machine and decreased here. So look at this, this is the difference. Of course, we stop the rotation now, as I said before. So we managed now to set up our power system on a simulator and uh, let's may make a test run now on the, in the time domain first. Here you have the time domain. Let's go for continuous simulation. So what we can see now is the load voltages and the load power. This is the red curve you see on, on the positive side. It's the same on both sides, both ends of the line and on the line itself you see the sources. Here is are the sources with the respective power outputs. They are on the negative side because they supply voltage to the grid. And what you can also see here is the, is the induced rotor voltage. Here is the voltage at the terminal. And what you see here is the synchronous reactance. So all these values are now available on the simulation. Let's now move to the phases. So I go to the phaser domain. This is what I can do here. So here are the phasers. Here you see the phaser for the induced voltage of the first generator. So this is the arrow you can see here. So, and then we have the terminal voltage. This is what connects to the line. This is what you can see here. And in between you have the rotor angle, which is about six degrees and delivers 71 megawatt. You can do the same for all the other generators. So this is the induced voltage of generator number two. And you have the terminal voltage, which is here. And in between, you have the phase angle. And the same uh, applies here. You can also see the power output. This is the power output of the first generator. You can see here the values and uh, the angle between the real power and the reactive power. So here are now the power outputs of the generators with the individual phase angles, uh, rotor angles, sorry, rotor angles. So I would like to adapt now these rotor angles. So I would like to get a little bit more pay power from this machine here and less from this and this. So I increase the rotor angle here. So you can see this is now increasing and the other power outputs, they are decreasing accordingly. So you see here mainly affected this one. So here the phaser angle is now much bigger in the first generator. You see here this induced voltage. Uh, this is this pointer here. And here we have the terminal voltage. This is what you can see here. So the rotor angle for this machine is here. And we can also see that the power output of the other generators have been uh, diminished. Let's now see what this means. So this is now the result. We have here a much we have here much more power output of the first generator 
and a much, much larger rotor angle. Here we have virtually zero power output with virtually zero rotor angle, and this is somewhere in between. Again, to make the case, this is where we are now, and this is where we were before. So now, before, and you see how the rotor angle changes from simulation to simulation. For those of you who are close to the subject matter, in reality, the synchronous reactants you can see here would be much larger. Therefore, there would be another effect. Depending on the load, the voltage at the terminal of the generator would drop and the automatic generation voltage control would increase the induced voltage. As usual, I recommend that you go to the simulator for learning by doing yourself. You can find the simulator under this address here. I wish you a lot of fun.